One of the main parts about having a media center is actually being able to back up and store your favorite DVDs. In this episode, I will show you how to set up auto rip and compress so that you can rip your DVDs to media center in one click without ever having to leave media center. This is the website for auto rip and compress. I have the links to the website for all the individual pieces of software listed in the video description. The software you will need to download is Make MKV, the Holly Media Splitter, Handbrake, and of course, download the current version of Auto Rip and Compress. Once you've downloaded these pieces of software, install them all in any order, it does not matter. After that, what we need to do is actually make an account on the GD3 database for cover art and metadata. Now all you need to do here is enter your first name, last name, email address, and a username. The password for this account is random and will be emailed to whatever email address you put here. Uh, keep in mind, all this information that you see here is fake, it's not real, I never really submitted it. I just did it for the video. Now, I took out the two icons for Auto Rip and Compress and put them on my desktop. One of them is uh, Auto Rip and Compress Profile Setup and Auto Rip and Compress Settings. We're going to run Auto Rip and Compress Settings. The first thing you're going to want to actually set is the drive letter. The drive letter for my computer is F. It'll differ for yours, but that's my DVD drive. The next thing I want to do is hit the checkbox that says Eject Disk when finished. You can check program location. Media center settings. These are the settings I prefer. You can do whatever you want, but or you can copy mine. But these are what I like. Um, okay. After that, we have metadata setting. The information we just made on the GD3 website, put it here. Username, password, then you press test credentials. You'll get a pop-up that says that uh, your information is correct and you can go on to something else. All right, let's go to RIP settings and uh, actually go to, uh, you see here, the DVD profile is default. We want to actually customize that. So we're going to go in default. We're going to rename the profile name. This is the first thing we're going to do. Make MKV or MKV RIP. Set it to DVD. Make sure RIP program is set to make MKV. Now, uh, we have temporary and final locations. We need to make some folders for this. So I'll go to another hard drive. Doesn't matter which one, it's up to you. I'm gonna make a new folder. Um, I don't know, rip DVD, DVD rip. Okay, we're gonna make another folder inside here. One, first one we're gonna make is the temporary folder. This is just a temporary folder while fi files are being processed, they'll be in there. After that, we'll make a final folder where after everything's processed, it'll go into this folder. So I named this one uh, DVD Ripped Movies. Now we're going to set these locations in the actual program itself. Okay, we'll set temp location. Navigate to your temporary uh, folder that you made, which is inside the uh, DVD Rips. No, that's an old one. Sorry. DVD Rips. Here we go. And uh, temporary. Click OK. And now we're going to set the final location. Navigate to that. Uh, DVD rips. Uh, DVD rip movies. And there we go. Now, the next thing we're going to have to do is deal with the format. There are many different formats to choose from. Um, but for compatibility, I suggest compressing it to MP4. WTV is the native Windows Media Center format, but it's not compatible with everything. So, I say MP4. MP4 is compatible with extenders, uh, the Windows itself, Macs, um, cell phones. It's one of the most compatible formats. Okay, MP4. Um, yeah, I think that's it for this specific screen. What we're going to do now is we're going to go over to Compress it Settings and we're going to actually customize those a little bit.
Okay, this is what I like for the most part. Let's see. Output quality, we're gonna choose target size, 1500. Well, it's 1 1.5 gigs. Uh, four subtitles, we'll actually turn that on in a minute. Um, yeah, keep temp, okay. Four subtitles, we'll turn that on because it's used to display short foreign pieces. Set uh, output audio to default and high profile on HB pre preset. Oh, just fix this. There we go. Save. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually open up Windows Media Center and uh, see what we have. All right. Let's go up to um, actually go up to extras in the extras library and start auto rip and compress. Now I already have a DVD in the drive. Uh, I have Sicko, the Michael Moore movie in the drive right now. Now, as you can see, it automatically named it and downloaded the cover art automatically. And that's thanks to the GD3 data and the uh, what we filled out in the, the website. Uh, gives you alternate covers, alternate movies in case there's two movies with the same name. And at this point, all I really have to do is press start rip. And it says uh, it'll run in the background and I'm free to do anything else in Media Center that I like while this is running. So I can watch uh, live TV if I have a tuner card and ignore this and come back in, you know, an hour, hour, hour or two, depending on what kind of hardware you're dealing with for conversion. And um, it'll be done and in my media collection. But as you can see, it's ripping Sicko, scanning disk. Uh, what it'll do now is it'll actually take the entire contents of the disk and copy it to that temporary folder in order to work on it. After it's finished copying it, it will eject the, the DVD disc. And uh, you can take that disc, put it away, and you don't need to worry about it anymore. In the background, like I said, it will do the conversion. Now I'm going to skip past most of this long processing. And uh, we'll actually go to uh, when it's done. Okay, as we can see, it's almost finished. Completing, compressing Sicko, and we should get a pop-up any second now, letting us know that, there you go, the process has been completed. So, we need to still do one more thing for it to be in our movie database. We need to tell Media Center um, to actually watch that folder, uh, the DVD rip folder. Because otherwise it doesn't know that there's, you know, it, it, it doesn't know right off the bat that movies go in that folder. So, you actually have to tell it that that folder... There's movies in. So let's do that now. We're going to go over to settings. Uh, media library. Uh, actually, no, not video. Uh, movies. Next. Add folders to the library. Do this on this computer, including mad, map net, mapped network drives. Um, okay. We're going to go over to the hard drive, the DVD rips folder, and there you go. That's the folder right there. So we're going to hit the checkbox next to that folder and click next. Uh, yes, I want to use these locations. Next, finish. We go back and we go up to the movie and movie library. Now we should see Sicko in our movie library with the cover. There you go. Sicko, ripped and compressed from DVD, permanently stored on my computer for my media center for me to watch whenever I want. And here's a little sample of it. I'll just do a quick, few quick skip throughs. The quality is almost DVD perfect. It takes up a lot less space. Okay, we're going to back out, and um, yeah, I think we're done with this. So let me exit Windows Media Center and actually show you the uh, folder where uh, Sicko was placed. This is the, the directory. And this is Sicko. We have uh, the cover art. We have an XML file containing information about the this specific movie. 
And uh, we have the movie, which is uh, two point something gigs, about one third the actual size of the DVD disc. Uh, in order to get that, we had to sacrifice an hour or two in conversion. But when everything was said and done, it'll sit in our media center permanently. And uh, we never have to worry about the disc. So anyway, that's how you rip and compress your DVDs. If you have any ideas that you think would make a great video, please send us a message.